Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and my partner Maggie Pashley and I run a healing centre with linked Airbnb in the far west of Ireland where we're filming this video just by the centre we run. And I'm telling you about Michael David, a hero of the Irish people. And basically I'm telling you because near our healing centre and Airbnb are five museums, which is quite wonderful. In fact, three of them to heroic people. And Michael David is one of those. So the Michael David Museum is just down the road in Strayed, uh, where he was born and where he's buried. And Michael David's story starts really when he was four and a half. And his family were living in a little cottage just in the field next to where the museum is now, just down from us. And they'd fallen into arrears of rent because of famine and financial hardship. And so the British landlord sent his agents, as happened daily. And turned the family out of their cottage they set fire to the thatch as four and a half year old Michael watched the destruction of his family home and then knocked down the walls so the family couldn't get back in. This was no exception. There was one there was I've seen the register of evictions of one landlord in Roscommon and he it made homeless a family a day, three hundred families a year on his register, turned onto the streets. And so the family, Michael's family, had to decide what to do. And so they walked to Swinford Poor House, which is near, near here. But there they found that boys over three couldn't be with women in the poor house. And so his mother was told that her son couldn't be with her. So such was her spirit. She said, the family will live on the roadside rather than be separated. And so they moved into the field nearby and also in the field were people with rags of clothing hanging off their bodies. This was the effect of landlordism in Ireland in the 19th century. And they had to decide what to do. So they actually walked to Dublin and then caught a boat to England and then walked to Lancashire, to Haslingdon. And there the father got a 12 hour a day job in the mill. They found a room in a terraced house where the landlord had 15 lodgers in the tiny terraced house. And as soon as Michael was old enough, he was put to work in the mill, he was nine I think, and he was working a 12 hour day. But when he was age 12, tragedy struck, his right arm got caught in the mill machinery and had to be amputated. The family were desperate, they needed the money. But disaster turned out to be spiritual opportunity, as is so well shown in the very moving mu museum exhibits. The Michael Dabbitt Museum is so worth going to. Another mill owner who was a bit of a philanthropist on the quiet saw that Michael was a very bright boy and so this mill owner paid for four years of education for Michael and that changed his life. And it changed things for the Irish people and for the Boers and the Russian Jews, as you'll discover. How amazing. So for four years, Michael learned to read and write and then got a job in the post office in Haslingdon as a clerk. But he was a bitter and angry young man. He hated the British for what they were doing. And so he started gun running 
and he was actually arrested in London on Paddington Station while he was waiting for a consignment of ammunition. And he was sentenced to 15 years hard labour in solitary confinement. So the first five years were actually spent speaking to no one in a cell picking oakum out of second-hand ropes. And then the second five years was spent in hard labour but not in solitary confinement. And the third five years he actually got parole for. That was the practice. And so he was released on condition he did nothing of a treasonous nature against the British Crown, the rulers of Ireland. But of course he did do treason and he campaigned for this land is ours, for land rights for the Irish. And he was very successful. He was elected to be an MP, a Member of Parliament, so he went to the Houses of Parliament in Westminster as an MP for an Irish uh, place. He served several terms as an MP, different places. And then another amazing thing happened. Whilst in London as an MP, he met Mahatma Gandhi. Now, Mahatma Gandhi was the teacher of non-violent revolution. He, uh, through non-violence, got the British expelled from India. So the Indians owe their country, really, to the non-violence, the Ahisma teaching of Mahatma Gandhi. And Michael Davitt was greatly affected by this. So when he went back to Ireland, instead of gun running and so forth, he arranged non-violence campaigns and boycott campaigns against the evils of the British landlords. And they were successful. He died in 1906. His story is so worth seeing. So do look at our um, Airbnb site, foxfordairbnb.com, and nearby is the Michael Davitt Museum. The staff there were so kind and dedicated. The film presentation is superb and deeply moving. You really should come. Thank you.